Dear Lord, thank you for today for giving us. Thank you for um, our time tonight. I thank you for the people in this room, uh, the impact that they have given to this community. Uh, thank you for this club and, and the uh, impact the club has made as well. Uh, we're here tonight to celebrate uh, 60 years in past presidents and uh, what they have given back as well. So uh, just grateful for uh, their service to the community and this club. Pray that you will continue to bless this community, bless each one of us. Uh, thank you for our first responders. Uh, thank you for those that are serving us home and abroad. And I just pray that you will continue to protect them. Uh, bless this food tonight, the nurse on advice, and thank you uh, for all you have given us. We are praying. Amen. 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 Throw in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so any guest tonight? Yes, sir. We got one guest. Uh, meet Chris Hines. Uh, he works at Trend Micro. Now, this is a broad audience to talk cybersecurity. Cybersecurity company. Uh, but he lives over near Wallace. Uh, he's got a five roll and uh, lives there with his wife as well. So be Chris. Well, be Chris. Um, any other guests? All right. So, um, looking forward to the next program as well. Uh, a couple of quick announcements um, as we continue to talk about. So, um, let's see notes here. Yeah. So coming up May twenty first. Okay. Oh, yeah. May twenty first. <laughs> uh, May twenty first. Joe is leading up our spring benefit concert and an auction component. So we'll continue to plug that event um, as well as. Uh, volunteer opportunity. So if you'd like to get involved and serve on a committee, whether it's site auction, live auction, um, day of logistics, you name it, there is a uh, place for you to serve. So uh, first of all, sponsorships as well. So first of all, our calendars, Saturday uh, the 21st. So that is pre-graduation, all the other um, festivities that happen in May. So we have no conflicts standpoint so put that on your calendar um, and then like I said if you invite to uh, volunteer uh, reach out to myself or Joe and we'll find a home for you for sure. I see several people in the audience tonight um, that are on the committee. Um, we had our first kickoff on uh, Tuesday night so uh, there's time so please you know, reach out if you'd like to, to join as well. Another note um, right here, right there. Um, you want? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so we've been asked this once or twice, but um, I'm putting together the scholarship committee. It's the committee of folks who interview the students and decide who our scholarship recipients are going to be. The application is out. They've started to come back in. We're going to do two days of interviews of high school students. That's March 29th and 30th. And then we're going to decide who the awardees are. So if you'd like to serve on that committee, got a few folks already, but um, there's room for more if anyone wants to join. And then we're going to do the breakfast on May 13th. So yes, reach out as well. Um, and on that note, let's see what we're going to do. So our community grant request will go live January 31st. It'll run through March, sorry, I don't want to count the fourth. Uh, Friday, March 4th. Um, so if you've got organizations that you're a part of, know of, that are in the Lacanas community, um, 
please reach out. They can apply for any grants from the Change Club. Um, like I said, that goes live on the 31st and will run in January. It'll run through March 4th. So um, please reach out uh, to Nathan or you can find a link to the team as well. So uh, we'd love to have uh, any organization to receive uh, a client. So um, please reach out to Nathan. Um, okay, so I think the announcement was that is it that we see in the room right now. So we're looking forward to the night. Um, as most of you know, um, in December we celebrated our official 60th anniversary. And tonight, um, Bill, um, what, what, Bill back on mic. We good? He's good. Perfect. So, uh, most of you know, our program, Bill Boyd, um, had a little surgery today. I'm happy to report that uh, he is doing well and is at home. Um, he's on the screen via Zoom, so uh, so happy to report he's, he's well and uh, recovering. So, um, but Bill put together a great idea and program for the night um, in honor of celebrating our 60th anniversary to have past presidents and share stories and times of their presidency. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our president-elect, Harlan Goldberg, that will lead us through the rest of the program. Well, good evening, Exchange Club. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I guess all of you uh, past presidents, why don't y'all go ahead and start making your way up to the stage, please. Grab a chair. Uh, Chris Brad, if you can help out with some microphones, that'd be great. They're up there on the screen. And while y'all are making your way up here, yes, uh, shout out to Mr. Bill Boyd um, for coming up with a great idea. A program that I'm not sure we've ever done before. And then, uh, and then totally bailing and, and calling me last week and saying, hey, by the way, can you run this great idea that we've never done before and see if you can figure it out? Thanks, Bill. I love you. Hello, <laughs> my name is Tate Borman, president, I think 2013. I think. I looked it up before we came. All right, yeah. well, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I don't know what I learned other than this is a very hard group to manage. <laughs> and it's a very hard group to come to a consens consensus, but somehow we did it. It was a great time. I really enjoyed it. A lot of you probably weren't even members when I was president. So, um, again, I'm Tate Borman. I hardly make meetings anymore, but it's a pleasure being here. And I look forward to meeting all of y'all tonight. Good evening, I'm Greg Duvall, and I followed Tate 2014. And similarly, uh, there were a lot of longtime members at that point, and a lot of new members now over the years since 2014. So. Um, but I, I am able to be here a lot and enjoy um, the 
vibrancy of the club even now, but uh, it's different. I guess we'll kind of unravel that a little bit through our discussion tonight. But uh, it's you know always been a great club that I was drawn to when I was young, like many of you are now. I was the young guy in the neighborhood. Now I'm the old fart, but um, nonetheless, uh, I, I love the the club and and what it's doing today and what it was doing all these years that all of us were uh, trying to shepherd it along. Thanks, Pat Paul. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gail Lewis, uh, 2019, and uh, I think a lot of you were here for my presidency, so when Bill set this up, I said I'd defer my time. Uh, but I think, you know, it's obviously a great club. We do a lot of great work. It's very hard to get any opinions out of people or people that have ideas to do things. So I just encourage everybody to get involved and let Carla know what you want to do next year. Hey, Scale. Get, a, get his home phone number off the uh, guide. Call him anytime, night or day. Let him know. I'm Chris Brown. I was the president last year. Most of y'all may not know that because we met mostly virtually and without very many attendees. <laughs> Um, things I learned, it's difficult to run a club, a social, you know, community-facing organization via Zoom. Um, we thrive on fellowship and being around each other and uh, sharing chats and food and beverages and working on things together. And so <clears throat> I'm encouraged that we're getting to do that now. But um, yeah, 2020 to 21 was, was pretty interesting. Uh, Truett Matthews, I was uh, uh, 15, 2015, I followed Greg, and on the other side of me was Mr. Mark Holmes, who's not here tonight, so I'll go ahead and say that. So I, uh, I, I followed an excellent president, and I left it in good hands when I uh, departed, and I followed some other good people on boards and stuff like that. So uh, once again, I was much younger when I joined as well, and I uh, am thankful for the association with each of you guys and the guys preceding me. Um, I, I Just to grow in the neighborhood the way we have and have your kids raised in the neighborhood and to walk through this and the processes that the Exchange Club does with our school system and in the community for those underserved and beyond, uh, I still think is there. And I still say today I had the greatest board ever and I learned more from them than I ever would have gotten on my own for sure they learn from me. So that, that's a lot of my takeaways is, is working with a good group of guys in the board and getting things done. Well, I can echo some of those sentiments myself as far as the board goes. Uh, John Osbaugh, I was uh, been a member for, I guess, 19 years. And uh, anyway, I was president from 2012 to 2013. I was preceded by Brian McCrory, who's not here. And actually, I guess he's not a member anymore either. And, and uh, I felt like when I took over, I was going to usher in a new, younger crowd. And, and therefore, I appointed Tate to be my president-elect. And uh, but as many of you know now, he's not really that young anymore. <laughs> uh, coming up, great. Right? But you know, that's what keeps this club going. It's not, you know, you got to keep bringing new members in here because you're always going to naturally lose members. And uh, just by bringing in new, new, younger faces, keeps the club vibrant and ongoing, and uh, it's great to be a part of a club like this. Tom Lockery, I was uh, president 2002-2003. Uh, uh, I was preceded by uh, the inimitable Jerry Allen, and uh, followed by Fred Halstead. I guess what I took away from my uh, uh, time as president is you always remember when you joined the club who was president when you joined the club. And uh, that's something that kind of sticks with me. So uh, I remember that. That was Perry Adams that was president uh, in 92 uh, when I joined the club. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing thing that we have here. We have a community that uses us as the glue uh, 
to reach across generations, to reach across ethnicities. Uh, it's, it's something really special. It's, uh, it's like uh, lightning in a bottle, so to speak. And uh, I'm praying that it continues that way. Uh, what I really remember most of all is how grateful uh, I was when our club was able to transition Galveston Island restaurant to the KC. <laughs> you guys don't know how good you have it here. <laughs> but uh, that being said, uh, I know uh, I know it's in good hands, and uh, all I can say is Robert, help is on the way. Hey Tom, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, where and what is the Galveston Island restaurant? <laughs> ah, well, you know where that. Uh, that health, uh, that primary care clinic used to be up there by the uh, the laundromat at uh, Royal and Skillman. That was the Galveston Island restaurant. Tom Thumb Center. Tom Thumb Center. And uh, yeah, Jerry Allen got the word that the bankruptcy was uh, was coming, and he managed to get the badge box out before the <laughs> So if you can imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry was probably their banker. He knew. <laughs> uh, Alan Watt and um, someone said something about being the old guy here. I, I don't think that's quite accurate. Um, I don't think I've gotten out of 2000 yet. I, I, was, I was president. I, I joined in 1980. I think it was 82 or 83 that I was president. Uh, we had a rip-roaring number of probably something less than 20 members. Uh, we, were, we were essentially on life support. We were trying to make sure that things stayed alive. And um, we were at Vic's Cafeteria at that time, which is the parking lot now that in front of the Albertsons, it's not there anymore, um, the next transition or whatever. But Vic's was kind of a center point at that point as a cafeteria. They had a club on the side. Um, my early years, my dad was a member of the club. A quick story. He uh, was a founding member, wasn't he? He was a founding member, but a quick story. They were they had a lot of fun. This was the Southwest Conference years, and uh, one of the guys in there was an SMU uh, grad, and so he thought it'd be a really good idea that during breakfast one morning, they would have he would have the SMU fight song. Uh, being played, and he had Peruna, the uh, mascot, run through the cafeteria uh, with the members, and uh, unfortunately Peruna got a little excited as Peruna was running through, and uh, Francis, who was the gal that ran the uh, operation over there for Vic, was, there were pictures of her on the floor cleaning up after Peruna because Peruna had deposited all the way through the restaurant. My dad decided it would be a really good idea then that if by God, if some SMU guy did something like that, that he was going to you know, show them. He went to A&M. He had his uh, coat from when he was his, um, trying to think of a word for it, blouse that he had had in Texas A&M. And so he dressed me up in that. I think I was probably, I don't know, 12 years old, something like that. And so he dresses me up in that. We had a collar. <clears throat> My mom had a drape that she had made with the Texas A&M blaze on the side. And so I ran through Vic's cafeteria with the Aggie Warham going on. And thankfully, thankfully our dog did not deposit anything. <laughs> so we were much more popular with Francis. But uh, so the, the club has a lot of rich history from that standpoint. The years I was there was, is, were very formative from the student standpoint, just kind of keeping things alive. The big deal back then was it was family style breakfast, meaning they would bring a plate of eggs and a plate of some sausage and bacon to each of the tables, which didn't amount to too many back then. But it depended on what time the crew got there that morning to start breakfast as to how done the eggs and the bacon really were, okay? And so you didn't know how much was running around the plate on the eggs and everything, but we still had a good time. And uh, the club has continued to, to exist and carry on. Thanks a large part, not that it's about the end of my deal, Doug Beatty, who was actually the president that was at this bank uh, sometime shortly after that, a few years after that, 
Doug really breathed a lot of life into this club and really brought a lot of members back in and everything and really think got things going back on. But when you think about the number of members we have today and the amount of money that you raised, we were really struggling. To, the, the goal was $10,000. We wanted to raise $10,000, which my dad at the time told me, well, we wanted to raise $10,000 too. So uh, you guys have passed way, way, way beyond that. And gals, I went through the transition of having women in the club. That's a whole other story. But anyway. Before you leave, Alan, what? you said Doug Bailey is president of this bank. Most of you don't know that this building used to be a bank building. Well, the ball's still back there. Uh, but anyway, so Doug was the president of the bank that was in this building, in the KC building, right across from Vic's cafeteria. And uh, Doug was a great guy and encouraged a lot of us throughout the community to do a lot of things. I'll tell you who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you didn't say something before now. <laughs> I'm John Dean. Uh, I was president from uh, 2006, 2007. Uh, I'd, I'd say some of my takeaways, I have several, but uh, I'd echo what Truett and John said. You know, the board is the key to a president. Uh, you need energetic uh, <coughs> folks that not, uh, not have a problem arguing with people uh, and getting the facts out, breaking through with new ideas, and have, who have a lot of energy, and I, I had that board. Uh, I got some flack when I was uh, president because I put two very young board members on my board uh, who folks thought they were much too young to be on the Exchange Club of Lake Island's board, but I put Tate and uh, Adam Meyerhoff on my board and everybody said, oh, too young, too young. Well, we heard a lot from both of them during our board meetings, but had we not put, board, uh, put both those guys on our board, uh, yeah, I personally think that that was kind of what started the role of getting some more young guys. It was all old guys in there, sorry guys. But uh, it also two guys come on the board and the membership, it was youth. And youth, youth is energy, youth is new blood. And those two guys were that. And, and they brought in new blood constantly. It was just wonderful. And I would say, you know, the takeaway for me is, is that, for Carlin and past presidents, I guess would echo me, but um, when you're president of the Exchange Club of Lake Highlands, I don't even know what your budget is anymore. But there's a lot of money that rolls through here. And you have potentially, if you can work it right, you have the talent of 150 to 175 men and women that can get out there and do a lot of stuff for you if you can just figure out what makes that magic that makes people want to work. So you got money, you got resources, and it's free. Those resources are free. You can do change the world. You can. You can change what you can do changing the world. And, and, and also do it quickly because that year goes by so fast. Uh, April comes up, May comes up, and you're like, damn, it, it's over, and I can't do anymore. So get a fast start, get going, and use your board, and use all these wonderful members that we have, uh, and keep growing the membership. I think when I was the president, we were 550, and our goal was to get to 165. I think we did it to kind of through Hooker Crook. Uh, we had, a, uh, at one of the uh, auctions, uh, Ryan Rommel, uh, many people had been drinking too much. There were guests. And they come through the ride and grab them and make them sign the card. And we got up to 173 or something <laughs> after that night. And I think we got dues for one month out of maybe, maybe 10 of them. And then everybody started quitting because they weren't really filter members. But we did get up to about 172. So anyway, uh, energy, young guys, uh, use your board and uh, use all this free, these free resources that we have. I'm Bob Johnston. I was president the year before John uh, in 2005 and uh, most people around here know me on Friday nights they hear me throughout the neighborhood as the voice of the Lake Highlands Wildcats but uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I keep thinking it's time to quit that job I've now been doing that one for 30 years and I'm saying somebody else needs to talk about football other than me and baseball and track uh, in 2005 was uh, a start of an instrumental year that John just talked about. In 2004, I was president-elect, and we kept saying at board, we're all the same age. 
we need to get younger folks into our organization. And so I kind of heard a little bit of that. And I said, John Dean looks young. He may not be young, but he looks young. And we'll, let's get John Dean to be our president of Black. Yeah, who me? And then John had the foresight, as he just said, to invite two guys to be on the board, Tate and Adam. Now, while I was on the board, and particularly John Shear, Tate and Adam kept bugging us at board meetings. We need to do some sort of activity for a weekend where we involve the whole club but we invite bands to come and have music and have a good time on weekends. And I kept saying to Tate and to Adam and to John, I don't think our members would come. <laughs> and I kept telling them that. Fortunately, Tate and Adam pers persevered. And all of a sudden, what they had suggested has now become October. And we thank you much, Tate and Adam both, yeah, for keeping pushing. That comes down to the group. They come up with good ideas that us older folks don't listen to as much as they, we need to. And if we'll just listen, we can find how to grow bigger. And I want to pick up on something that, that almost all of us have said. We all invite our friends, we hopefully all invite our friends to be a member of the Exchange Club of Lake Highlands. We need to remember to invite our younger friends. Sometimes you've been in an organization like this for several years and you've all, you kind of got your friends there. And all of a sudden it gets a little stale. It doesn't progress like it can. But if you'll get the younger members in, they'll become board members, they'll serve on committees, and all of a sudden you've got an ongoing re-evolution of your club. So my main takeaway from tonight is keep inviting your friends to be members of Exchange, but more importantly, invite your younger friends than you are to be members of Exchange. And this thing will keep rolling. We've been now rolling for 60 years. As we said, uh, Herb Wong was among the starters of this, this project, and I did come to a few meetings while we were at VIX, and then I joined while we were at Galveston Island. And, uh, uh, it's been a great organization and continues to be a great organization, but you got to keep it young. I, I, I'm going to just insert for a second. I, I happen to be, a, maybe I'm the only one. Did anybody else go to be district president? I think, I think I'm the only one up here that went on to be district president. And, uh, Ogilvy was. Uh, Rick, Rick Christie was. Uh, there were, we've got several members from our club who've been district president. During my time as district president, I saw five clubs disbanded because they had all gotten older and they hadn't stayed young. The ones that succeeded and are still going keep insisting and keep encouraging younger members to join them. And women, we haven't had many women join lately. You know, Exchange didn't open up the membership of women to Exchange. I can't remember what year it was, but it was, it was 2000 or something like that. And uh, we need some women to join our club. I know we're lucky in Lake Highlands to have the Junior Women's League and the Women's League and several other organizations that the women can get involved in, but we need to get women involved in our club as well. With that, I'll shut up. Now, I don't know if you would like for me to. Well, um, I'm gonna kind of hit on a note that I think a lot of you guys have kind of alluded to, um, just about this idea of passing the torch and, and the way the club moves on from 
year to year, generation to generation. Um, and I'll just kind of open this up for whoever wants to answer. We don't necessarily have to go down the line. If you guys want to, you can. Um, did any of you guys have a, within the club and kind of within the exchange club context, a mentor or somebody who kind of showed you the path and, and took you in a direction where you ended up becoming the president? I probably did a little bit in Ward Bogery. Ward was the one that invited me to join the club. And Ward kind of, uh, you know, Ward, for those of you that didn't know Ward, and really for those of you that did know Ward, Ward was a unique individual. Ward was an attorney, a very straight-laced attorney, who felt that the law was to be kept by everybody except himself. <laughs> I, can, I can remember he invited me at one time to go down to a Baylor football game with him. And we got there in less than an hour. <laughs> when we pulled up, huh? In a Porsche. Yeah, in a Porsche. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about the Porsche again in a minute. Uh, we got there and he pulled right up to the ticket gate. And I said, Ward, aren't we gonna park? And he says, we are parked. And I said, Ward, this isn't a park, it's my parking spot. So we, we were right at the ticket gate to get into the stadium. Uh, speaking of the Porsche, for most, most of you recall, if you were a member back then, Ward would always come in a little bit late to a meeting and he would always park his Porsche in the very first parking spot as you came into the parking lot out here. It kind of got, uh, got to be a situation where everybody was a little irritated at his board because he was always parking in that parking spot and or not a parking spot, but he would make it a parking spot. And I guess that brings me to another thing, and, and I, I know I've talked too long, Another thing that I want to encourage us all to do, and that is be kind to each other. <coughs> you know, sometimes we, we I, I know that we collectively as a club would sometimes come in and say, Ward, the police are out there towing your porch. <laughs> and he'd jump up. Well, it got after many, many months of this, it got a little old award quite candidly. And so we need to be kind. I can also think, and I'm gonna bring up a name that those of us who have been along around here for a long time know. Mike Pappas, one of our former past presidents. Pappas was a, he, he started out as a Dallas County constable, kind of got into politics a little bit, and Mike was eventually appointed for Maureen Dickey, a city councilman, as her road and bridge county commissioner, as her road and bridge guy. Well, this had kind of started a little earlier in that Mike uh, had also owned a restaurant here in Channel 4, I believe it was, did an expose on Mike and how he was supposed to be out on his county commissioner's job, I mean his uh, constable job, but he was at his restaurant uh, making sure the food got on the table. And then when he got appointed the road and bridge guy for Maureen, turned out there was only one bridge in his whole area of uh, purview. And he would come in on, on Monday, on, on Friday morning, and first thing, how's your bridge doing, Mike? Is your bridge doing okay? And we were a little unkind to Mike. I think he, it became so unkind that he left. He quit. And so be sure to be kind to your folks. Uh, we love to have fun and we, we want to have fun, but be cognizant that sometimes our fun hurts if we keep doing it. So those are the two, that's a word of us, stay young and be kind to our own members. 
That's what I've got to say. started pointing out something, you know, that y'all got up on his on your boards um, early when he and Adam were here and were young. I mean, Tate was my introduction to the club. I think Tate was the introduction to everybody that was my generation or younger, you know, around 2010 or so. Um, and Tate put me on the board for the first time when Tate was president, you know. No way would I have stuck around. I mean, the club was great. I loved getting involved, and but I didn't have kids in school yet. I mean, I, we were doing stuff that had nothing to do with me. Um, and but if, you know, if it hadn't been for Tate and kind of getting me involved early, I don't know that I would have stuck around and continued on that trajectory to, you know, eventually becoming president. And um, so yeah, I appreciate that, and definitely you know, kudos to, to having the foresight of you know getting the club younger and, and engaging. Um, the young families in the community because it really has kept the club vibrant um, and I think that you know without people saying it explicitly maybe it was said back then but it wasn't passed down that way that hey we got to keep getting younger we got to keep getting younger it's just kind of organically happened um, as I look out here you know it's, it's a lot of young newish faces um, and I think that's great um, in terms of mentorship I mean I I point to the the guy on my right here who was president ahead of me and made me the, the president-elect um, that kind of mentored me towards taking that leadership role. Um, you know, a lot of guidance, just a lot, but not heavy-handed, right? Just, you know, sitting back and often with a, you know, a lot of humor and quick wit as he's wont to do. Um, it's kind of keeping things moving in the right direction, a positive direction. So, Gail, I appreciate, you know, your guidance and mentorship along the way. And I think that's, Again, in terms of keeping the club moving forward, progressing, and moving in the right direction, yes, get younger, but continue to, you know, pass on the, the wisdom of the history of the club, and um, you know, kind of keeping the needle going forward. So, thank you, guys. I would say my mentors in the club were my dear friends Greg and Truett, and. But they didn't invite me to join the club. Um, I'm going to throw this story out there. I had always been told, don't join the club till your kids are in junior high or high school. Nobody joins when they have younger kids. And I was on the board of the YMCA, and we got a new director. And I was president of the board, and he said, I was told I need to join the exchange club or start going. Would you take me? And I said, sure. So we came one Friday morning and somebody started introducing guests and uh, when I stood up to be introduced as a guest, I thought that director was gonna kill me because he thought I was a member. <laughs> I just came to join. So, but very quickly I got on Greg's board and you know, I hadn't been around very long. So when he said, do you wanna do programs? I was like, programs, that sounds great. I'll do programs. <laughs> And uh, I don't think his name's been mentioned yet tonight, but part of it, Don Lee, who many of you have known and heard about, one of the first programs I had, um, Don came up to me afterwards and said, you know, I can help you get good programs. <laughs> so, thanks, Don. Do y'all want some beers in? Sure. <laughs> a couple of shiners, a couple of barrel lights. You, you might want an order. Shot or box, fine. <laughs> Anybody else? I, I just want to mention uh, one guy that was a member of the club, Bob Sanford. Uh, Bob was uh, the only guy that I know of. I don't know if this has happened again. He was president of the club twice. He was president of the exchange at Lake. Of course, it was. North Lake Exchange Club, and it may have been North Lake Exchange Club both times that he was president before it became Lake Islands Exchange Club. But Bob kind of ran into that situation where they, no one wanted to be president. And he, he, he agreed, volunteered, and said, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll do it again. So he, he was the guy that 
that uh, and you, you know, may know Rick and Beverly Marr. That's, well, Beverly was the daughter of uh, Lola and Bob. Lola passed away here just recently. And, uh, but you know, one of the others that it was in the club that meant a lot to the club at the time, so, uh, I can't remember Tracy's last night, but we had, we had our evening meetings back then at Tracy's Country Club. And it was the townhome development that's there at Royal Lane and uh, Aldelia. There in that area, they've got a clubhouse there and everything. There you go. There you go. Got to be on there you go. And, and we would we would be there and we would cook steaks. We had a big steak fry out there and uh, uh, order beers and, and have beers. And if that's when we had our business meeting. Uh, and I don't know that we still have the same type of business meeting we had back then, but you'd have a business meeting once a year that would give everybody this kind of the state of the union as to you know where we were financially, how much we raised, what was in all the different accounts, and, and then the president would kind of give a whoever the incoming president was would kind of give his synopsis of this, okay, this is where we want to go and everything. But stop Bob Sam, Sanford was and he was Gilbert X Ray but back, you know, several years ago, I think Gilbert's been bought by <laughs> Open bar president, right? There. <laughs> right. My idea. Other question from you? Uh, let's throw it a different direction. Uh, we've kind of had some mention of uh, events and uh, fundraising, and the way that you know the goals have kind of evolved. Anybody want to share um, a memory, a, a story of a favorite event, or uh, a quick chat about? what it was before Oktoberfest or the auction the way it is today? I'll share. Um, again, I was 2006, 2007, uh, right after Bob. And uh, so we, we would do an auction every year and I'm, uh, it, it was getting bad. It was, uh, I or my board likened it to a garage sale. And poor Bob and Jerry would have to gather all the goods at their house. He'd walk in his house, it looked like a carnival uh, storage place. And so, you know, and, and I'd go to the president and say, okay, everybody, bring your, bring your gifts in, or bring your auction items in. And you look out at the, the membership and they're like either asleep or rolling their eyes. And, you know, I told my board, the, the bloom's off this auction. We've got to do something else to take the heat off. The auction, I can't remember which one made the year, it was pretty really decent, uh, but it was just, you could see it dying because of the, what was going on. So, I had a board member, Sam Fink. Maybe she was turn it off. Let's turn it off. Let's turn it off. Yeah. I had a board member, Sam Finkley, who was very energetic and had all kinds of ideas, and we proposed to our board that we needed a way to raise some, some additional money in addition to the auction, which I felt was dying as it was, and poor Bob and Jerry kept it going. Uh, so the idea was LH Live, and LH Live uh, ended up being at SoCal, which is down the road on Walnut Hill, almost to Green Bullets Hill. It's a uh, Czechoslovakian gymnasium. Most of my board members were rolling their eyes like, John, I, I remember John Moore, was like, John, we can't do this, this is like Holland, we, we just can't do this. Anyway, we had three dad bands, the malfunctions, Pit Pops in West Nile and Texas West Skeeters. Nile, yeah. They were all, and we had them on a stage, and they'd each play for 30 minutes or 25 minutes, and then they'd get off, and we'd research, put the other band up there, 30 minutes, everybody was dancing for 30 minutes. The tickets uh, were $20 a piece. It was Jan in, the, in January 13th, something like that. Um, and, and we were 450 tickets that we were going to sell, and we had them all printed up. And everybody said, yeah, good luck. Anyway, we sold that something. Uh, two, I don't know what's going on here. But two, weeks, two weeks before the deal was done. And um, so that's $9,000 there, whatever. And, and then the SoCal also, also sells beer, sells beer downstairs. A uh, very cool old bar down there with an old guy that ran it. So we got, we got a buck off every beer. And so that night there was an ice storm, not as bad as Snowmageddon, but it was bad. I mean, and it, there's a slope down to get to the so-called. And people were sliding cars down there. Everybody said, but nobody's gonna come. 450 people at least came. Uh, and so we sold out, the, the bands all played. We had a dance contest. 
you know, and it was unbelievable. People were calling me beforehand because we, we were told we couldn't bring liquor in because they sold their own liquor and wine. And, and they would call me and say, well, can we bring liquor? And I said, just read the rules. No, I didn't say no. And anyway, so people did bring their own liquor, which we discovered when the show was over at midnight and we were cleaning up. It looked like a fraternity party. All <laughs> the beer bottles and wine bottles underneath the tables. It, we needed a bulldozer almost to clear it out. So we had your uh, smoker there to, to smoke food and stuff. Anyway, we ended up making uh, net of $7,500 for that deal, and it, we thought we had hung the moon. <laughs> so that was LH Live, and then they continued doing it for another three or four years. The next year they made 20,000. So it took a little bit off the auction, and then we kind of moved into this other stuff that, that Tate and the folks came up with. But uh, yeah, it was fun, and we, we call it, we didn't call it a fundraiser, we call it a fun raiser. And everybody had fun. So it was a good party, right? Yeah, it was a good party, 450 people were there. Anybody else? I'll, I'll say something. When I uh, joined, they didn't immediately put me on the board, but they were they were putting stuff on my plate. And one thing they asked me to do was hold a fundraiser, and I was like, okay, what, what is this about? And they wanted me to do a spaghetti dinner at the high school. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so I already thought this was like a high school dad's club, and that kind of proved the point. <laughs> I joined, no kids. I'm like, what kind of? Is this and uh, you know, I remember going to Sam's and buying a shit ton of sorry, pasta, <laughs> tomato sauce, and, you know, we are wearing hair nets in the high school, <laughs> charging you know, five bucks a day. I don't know how much we paid, but it was fun, you know. Um, that kind of broke me into the mold of, of raising money for the exchange fund. And uh, we'd always joke about the auction, um, you know, it's a, it, was, it was fun. But one thing I noticed was we have it at a fancy hotel and the drinks were like, you know, 10 bucks. Yeah. And finally, after a lot of fighting, I convinced them to either open the bar up or provide some kegs so people could just drink. Because I figured if you're drinking a lot, you're gonna start, you know, spending more money. And uh, finally, <laughs> somehow I convinced you guys to do that and that made it a little more, I think people have loosened their wallets a little more. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you want to, do you want to share anything about certain Oktoberfest real quick? Just give us a quick condensed version of how that all went down. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so you mean like how it started? Yeah, I, yeah. Just a little history. So I, um, I'm trying to remember how it started, but you know, I, I grew up going to Worst Fest, loved it, and at some point, um, McCrory was the president. I was on the board. Adam Meyerhofer was on the board with me and we started talking about alternatives to the auction because the auction was getting full sale. And um, we just thought, you know, let's just try this, you know, party at, at the uh, town, center. town center. Town center. It was like from 12 to 4. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't built yet. It was. Yeah, it was yeah. So, so back then, it was basically streets with nothing built and you had a little water fountain, you had the amphitheater. So it was perfect. There's parking, we could put some stuff up. So we did it from like 12 to four. Um, and you know, we had no idea what to expect, but we rounded up some, we actually had polka back then, like unlike now. We had polka bands, we had, uh, um, our main sausage. Uh, no, oh, Kubis. 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 that was a big deal for us. Cause we were like, hey, we're legit. If Kubis, comes. <laughs> Kubis joined us and uh, you know, it was a great day, no rain, and, and people surprised us. There, a lot of people came out. We uh, we had volunteers, exchange club volunteers, trying to help people park. And there were some issues. I think someone ran off like a, a little cliff and messed up his car. Uh, the next year, we like made little uh, releases to give everybody. When they <laughs> <parked their car. laughs> we're not liable. And uh, you know, hitting these potholes. Anyway, it was a success for us back then. It raised, I don't know how much we raised the first year, but it was quite a, it was a lot more than we expected, and then we just started growing. Um, it was fun. I remember how many baby carriages came to that first and second year. I thought, Lord have mercy, where did all these baby carriages come from? But the whole community turned out for it. Yeah. And it was a great job, and again, you and Adam kind of pushed us we're glad you did. 
to say, John, I'm, I think my board chair, the Octoberfest committee, spends $7,500 at their meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> Not to pop your bubble. Right, I know. We saw it big time. Just something I think newer members don't know that I think this is still true. This club is like the second or third biggest club in the world. You know? And uh, you forget about it. Well, let's, 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 let's be a little more precise. Exchange is not a worldwide organization <laughs> like Lions Club and like the Columbus Club. Exchange is limited to the United States plus Puerto Rico, which is a uh, colony of the United States. I'm saying it right, Dallas. And uh, so it is, it, it calls itself America's Service Club because we're one of the few service clubs that actually only exist in the United States, again, plus Puerto Rico. We're the biggest, second biggest in the U.S. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we got Puerto Rico to ask to get to. <laughs> but you just need to remember, as president, like visiting other clubs, um, I visited our neighbors to the north club meeting, and we sat around a table, and there were about 12 of us. It's smaller than our board meeting. So, we take for granted what we have with this club because most of them are 20 people and smaller. And as somebody said earlier, it's a group and they kind of age through it when the club is here. So we're very fortunate with the history we have and the size we have of what we can do. I just thought I'd throw out a fundraiser effort that <laughs> had mixed success. Uh, for years, uh, we would do what we called roadblocks, and we'd stand up there at the intersection of the Delia and Skillman, and uh, we'd have aprons, and we'd have uh, pickle buckets, and we'd try not to get hit by cars. <laughs> and, but that, that got to be, you know, we'd, we'd raise maybe three to five thousand dollars over a weekend. Uh, Panhandlers and homeless guys would come up to us. <laughs> want to argue about that or ask for a cut, but eventually we decided that was too dangerous to do. And so, uh, in desperation, uh, I went. Uh, I went to the lottery, and uh, we uh, we ended up uh, buying a uh, Mustang uh, from the Troy Aikman uh, Ford. And we were going to sell uh, tickets, ten dollar tickets, four thousand of them, and we were going to get them. Well, man, by the time we came up with the expenses for that car and the expenses for the other prizes for the sales kids, because the members weren't really selling enough tickets, we had to go to the high school students to drive them to sell tickets. We made about ten thousand dollars raffling that poor Mustang, but. Uh, I, I would not recommend raffle to because it's just uh, a lot of a lot of uh, sweat equity went into that for very little. It, it hadn't been legalized at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you could have a lottery at the time we did it. Uh, nonprofits. We are a nonprofit. <laughs> you are allowed two raffles a year. Oh, or gave them a quiz. And Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember correctly, we had all those people that bought it in their tickets foot and a half or whatever. And everybody was standing by waiting for the winner. And they pulled the winner out and it was a lady from Seattle. Yeah. Salem, Oregon. Salem, Oregon. <laughs> Salem, Oregon. <laughs> so it wasn't even a local person. We were all like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not even an LH person. <laughs> she redonated. <laughs> she redonated. Yeah. Of course. No, no, she sold it and got the money. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, well, you're, you're sounding better. <laughs> it's just like there's this huge, nice balloon there and just popped when she said she was from Salem, Oregon. But anyway, we bailed out and we made money. We did it. It's a hard way to go. Come on, the internet. Come on. This one right there. Hey, come on. Chris Boteen, everybody. Chris Boteen, everybody. Chris, do you want some to drink? Chris, do you want some to drink? Here, Chris. Are you the beer man? You got all the beers. Open bar. Open bar. Well, Chris has come down to get comfortable. We had, when my dad was president, we had the Lake Island Junior Exchange Club at high school. And I was a member of the Lake Island Junior, or Lake Island High School Junior Exchange Club. And our 
biggest program ever was my dad had got to be good, pretty good friends with Bob Lilly. And Bob used to, dad had a car wash across the street where the, the uh, crematory group is now, where you look at the car wash. He had a station on the corner of the garage and the, and the car wash. And dad had offices there down there in the car wash. And Bob Lilly actually utilized his office early on when he was, you know, just kind of doing stuff on the side or whatever. But Danny called Bob and said, would you mind coming to, you know, talk to the, your change club? And he said, sure. So I went with Dad to pick up Mr. Lilly. And, I mean, I mean he, was, he was a big guy then. He didn't seem quite as big by comparison today of what NFL players are. But I still remember him getting out of the car that he had to actually take and kind of put his arms up on top of the roof and pull himself out because his legs had gotten so weak from his activities as an NFL player. But that was by far the largest turnout that we'd ever had, and we had a membership explosion. <laughs> and it lasted about two weeks. When they found out nobody else was coming, that was it. Nobody else wanted to be a member. But he made it one. Remember when Wade Smith from uh, yeah, yeah. came to our some of our meetings? And that was big. Yeah. Many scholars. Yeah, yeah. scholars. So I, I got a celebrity that came to one of my meetings. might have been yours and mine, though. It was in June, late June, and it was 2006. It was the governor's race, the state of Texas oh, against, yeah. against Rick Perry, and somehow I don't Kiki Friedman. Kiki, Kiki Friedman. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know. Love it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. anything goes. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so Kiki Friedman. We had a huge turnout, and the guy sat up there with his alcohol and his, or, and his cigar. And, and he brought his little helper with him, and he just spoke about his three things that he was going to support as governor of the, you know, Texas. And it was Kinky Friedman, and then we had Chris Bell to get back at him later on in the year. But Kinky was something else. He was. <laughs> he was something else. Yeah, I got his autograph on a poster. <laughs> <laughs> Kinky for where, is it, where is it now, Hank? It's in my office. He sold it. No, it's in my office. Hanging for out. All right, let's uh, change directions a little bit. Let's have a little bit of fun. Um, we'll go we down the line. Fun? No, we're having a lot of fun, Bob, but we're, we're going to try to entertain the people a little bit here. Uh, so if we're going to do a little one-word short rapid-fire answer down the line, um, and then we'll open it up for a little Q&A if anybody else wants to add anything to the conversation. Um, okay, Virginia back in college. Who would you rather be roommates with Patrick Brown or Mark Holmes. Jesus. Do we have to one word answer? Holmes. I was Holmes' roommate in Chicago. Oh, no. <laughs> Tell me about it. When we went to Chicago, we did a baseball trip to see the Rangers and the Cubs a few hours, and I got through with Mark. And uh, I don't know what time he came back. <laughs> It was uh, well after 3 a.m. because he kept me out till then. So I'd say Mark. <laughs> I'd say Mark. Mark? I'd agree, Mark. Is it two nights? Four nights. Half the night, Mark. Why? You got a problem with the fitness. Who snorted that? Oh, yeah. Mark definitely snorted. <laughs> Come on. Mark, oh, Mark. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to that, so I, I, I think Patrick. <laughs> All right, how about this one? Um, let's say you're out in the woods and facing like a bear or something. Um, like, you know, uh, which, you know, any kind of life endangering situation, is there an ECLH member that you would want to be there and have your back? <laughs> oh man, it, it would be uh, I, man, I, I think Bill Boyd would be where it's at. I mean, on. he's got a ladder. I know he carries around. Is it more? But uh, uh, else? That might be the first. I just want one that's slower than I am. I think Colonel Wood would be my first. <laughs> I'm about to pick that one. I think I'd pick that one. 
I'm going MacGyver Mosley because he can kill it with something he had on him. So not that he needs batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when I say exchange club breakfast, you say what? Cholesterol. Gravy. Generally good. Generally, I would tell you. Hey, can I say something go ahead. about the breakfast? So there was a time when some some folks were really tired of the Knights of Columbus effort on their breakfast making, and it's changed big time. Um, and so there was a, a handful of people pushing to change locations for our breakfast. And I remember this. And uh, I mean, we talked about this forever. But we looked at different places. So they host us, different locations would host us and put on their best efforts to entice us over there. One, one place we went to a couple times was uh, Village North, that retirement center. <laughs> <laughs> They had like breakfast tacos, and they, they, it was really good. It was really, really good. good. The seniors would come in and wander in and kind of peer at you. <laughs> and then another place we went to was Top Golf. Right when they yeah, opened, yeah. They, they were totally wanting us to come every Friday morning. They gave us, put us in a big room, and uh, it's better be cool. But but anyway, Knights of Columbus heard we were kind of looking to the big up their game. It's been very good since then. So. Lovely. All right. I'll throw it open. Anybody out here want to throw so, something out there? So, Tay, you were the inspiration, I believe, for the all infantry tag at the show party the very last year. Do you remember what else happened that year? Sure. Toilets backed up, and they were back in the bathroom. Are you talking car about car the Park Lane place? Yeah. 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 The toilet so, issue. So, Tay got the great idea. Let's get all your drink tag and pour beer as fast as we can. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to happen. He <laughs> didn't make it. Man. It was not good. I didn't break the toilet. <laughs> Did we try to buy the Sokol at some point? Is that true? We, some of the members talked about you know getting an investment deal and buying that and using it for the Shade Club, and it just kind of petered out. I, I don't think it's for sale. No, it's not for sale. It's, it's a not profit. Yeah. I was wondering if that was true or not. Oh, it, it was a, a distant dream. Those four rounds spent a lot of money to fix it up. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Nathan? Where did y'all used to meet as a war? Because you know, we met a few of our brothers for a long time. Downstairs. Downstairs. Right down the street. My year we met at JJ's Cafe. They, they opened up in the evening. They have like hamburgers and green beans. It's like the weirdest mix of things. But it's good. We had a whole place to ourselves. Who was the president to hear we were down there and the knights came storming down in their full costumes? We were making too much noise down there on the knights. It used to be the old banks court. Yes, yes, yes. Tony's at one, one time, Tommy Bailey's all ready to yeah. Tony. Tony's, and there was another Mexican food restaurant over on Walnut Hill and Plain. Tony's was probably the best. Yeah, I was at Tony's. Yeah, yeah. Was, anyway, we'd do it, and we'd have Tony board members back then, 12 or whatever, and uh, everybody got to order what they wanted, but you bring your own liquor because that's the way Tony's is, so everybody bring wine and beer. Oh. Board members. Our board meetings went from like one hour to three hours. <laughs> and then we get the bill, we get the tab, and I remember we would have to pay it to the president. It was like $95. We're like, you got the charge. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anyway, we can always give our big tips. Yeah. Uh, that's great. That, that's All right, anyone else? One more? <laughs> All right, it's good play. I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for being here tonight and sharing us a little bit about the history of our club and your experiences. Um, I think it's awesome insight and I appreciate each and every one of you for doing it. Um, thank you for everybody that showed up tonight and uh, on Zoom. And uh, I think with that, we are wrapped up and.
we will officially adjourn. Uh, but we're going to hang around and pick these guys' brains or uh, have a drink and make cake. Oh, cake. Yeah, apparently we've got cakes. Everybody, uh, should we sing happy birthday? Oh, yeah. to the club? Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, thank you, everybody. <laughs>